Good evening and welcome to the Nevis Newscast. Today is a Thursday, 2nd March 2017. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. The second part of the Ministry of National Security sponsored crime symposium took place earlier today at the Four Seasons Resort. The meeting, which was attended by numerous stakeholders interested in security and safety, received opening remarks from Premier of Nevis, Honorable Vance Amory. Clearly, crime has a changing or damaging effect on the economy of any country. St. Kitts and Nevis, and especially Nevis, is reliant on tourism and other services. Whether real or perceived, the performance of our tourism industry is extremely sensitive to rising crime. More than any other economic activity, the success or failure of our tourism industry depends on our ability to provide a safe and secure environment for our nation, of our, our nationals and our visitors and those who want to invest. This symposium today and what you do here is a call to action, a call to action. The reaction may come, but if we take action, then the reaction will be minimized in terms of what we have to do. A short presentation was also made by Crime Reduction Specialist and Social Skills Consultant, Dr. Niels Chaitan. There are really two options we can engage with our young people. One, option number one, inspire, educate, and bring hope. As what I'm doing here in Grenada, before school, and what I'm doing in your schools, by the way, across the Federation, or two, Option number two, that's me bearing a young man, actually my shovel in my hand, young man who we lost, and got shot, was my cousin by the way. We have two options. Question is today, as I put the microphone down, what will you do? You were called here not to philosophize, but to say what we should do. I pray God at the end of today, we'll come up with some good strategies to build a national strategy so this beautiful sugar city of St. Kitts and Nevis could rise, rise from the ash heap of criminal activity and murder and retake its name, its noble name in the Caribbean as a beautiful Twin Island Federation. The second part of the consultation had as its objectives, one, to review the strategies and recommendations emanating from the National Crime Symposium held in St. Kitts with a view to further clarifying and strengthening recommended strategies where necessary, Two, classify the strategies for each route of crime under the either enforcement, diagnosis, education, and rehabilitation framework. And three, make recommendations for the implementation of the comprehensive National Crime Reduction and Prevention Strategic Plan that will emerge from the symposium activities, including monitoring and data collection processes. Today's session was chaired by Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security, Osmond Petty, and the invocation was done by Reverend Telford Matthew, Chairperson of the Nevis Christian Council. The Nevis Cultural Development Foundation earlier today received some assistance from the Republic of China on Taiwan in the form of video equipment and films. In his opening remarks, former CEO of the NCDF, brainchild of the initiative, Keith Scarborough, said the project was about encouraging students into becoming involved in the cultural arts by showing the discipline and commitment involved. Deputy Premier Minister of Culture and and Minister of Foreign Affairs was encouraged by the opportunity being provided to the students. I'm sure all of you sitting down here would have heard of Marshall Montana. All of you would have heard of Rihanna, Nancy, and Michael Jackson, and all of these famous names. But the reality is that those people are proponents of culture. That's what they do. They sing, they dance, and you and I go out and we pay big money to see them. We buy their CDs, we dance to their music, we do all of those things. And so I want you 
to consider that you can be the next big thing in culture globally. Not just here in Nevis, but globally. His Excellency George Gawe Chu, the resident ambassador from the Republic of China, Taiwan, said it was his government's pleasure to provide assistance to the students of Nevis. Culture is very simple. In simple words, it's a correction over your life, over my life, your parents' life, your ancestors' life. The main purpose of this uh, cultural film is to want to open the mind the eye of your mind, the eye of your intelligence. Because nowadays, we cannot just sleep by ourselves in St. Kitts and Nevis or in Taiwan. This is the world village. You need to go out of your world, your village, not, not, not because you want it or not, because the environment push you, you need to go, to, go outside. And when you have an opportunity to touch the different culture of other societies, then I hope that this can help to open your minds. And so when, as you grow up, you, can, you understand that there are some different kind of culture, some different kind of society in the world, and that you will need to contact with them. Premier and Minister of Education, Honorable Vance Amory, officially launched the cultural film program. It is our challenge, as we have been exposed today, and as we will continue to be exposed, that we make a determination to preserve our culture. So you don't have to be a singer. You don't have to be a dancer. You don't have to be a drum player or a steel band player or anything like that. But if you have an appreciation and a love for your culture, it will help the culture to be preserved. And that really is my simple challenge and encouragement to you as I seek today to declare the launch of this cultural initiative. Thursday's ceremony at the Nevis Performing Arts Center was witnessed by students and teachers of the Charleston Secondary School as well as staff of the Nevis Cultural Development Foundation. The Nevis Electricity Company has been put in a position where late yesterday, Wednesday, it advised of the real possibility of load shedding. General Manager Jervan Swanston said their fuel supplier, Delta Petroleum, had not delivered its latest shipment on time, which had forced them to make a safety decision. At the power station, there are two high-speed generating sets, engine number 7 and engine number 10, the newly commissioned containerized unit. These units are unique in that they use a special oil called NP Special. We are presently low on stock as Delta would normally has, have delivered the same oil to us by yesterday Tuesday. We were however today informed that a container load of the said oil that was destined for Nevis was mistakenly left in St. Croix. According to Swanston, low oil levels necessitated that engines number 7 and 10 were taken out of service. The Nevis Electricity Company, Mr. Swanston advised, was depending on the electricity generated by the wind farm at Madness, which seemed to have averted any load shedding. Every effort was being made by Delta to have the necessary fuel delivered to Nevis in the shortest possible time. Once the oil is received, the electrical supply will be restored to a state of normalcy. Nevlek craves the patience and understanding of our valued customers as we make every effort to correct this difficult situation that is entirely out of our control. We received this update earlier today from Mr. Swanston. Number of logistics has been in the process of being worked on as recent as today. In fact, we are looking at an alternative of getting some out of a company in Antigua. Now, if all this goes well and we can have this oil by tomorrow, we are going to be fine. However, in the event that we cannot get this, we, the oil cannot be in Nevis before on Tuesday. And so oil and so load shedding, sorry, is going to be imminent. So we are presently working on the schedule, and so we are going to come back preferably um, as soon as we know when it's going to be or where we are. What is good for us, though, is that the wind penetration continues to be excellent from the wind farm, and so as a result of that, we have been able to keep the entire island on from since this problem developed yesterday. And so again, we crave the patience and the indulgence and whatever else is required from you, the general public, as we strive to get past this difficult situation.
That was general manager of the Nevis Electricity Company, German Swanston. Still to come, both owners urged to remove boots from Cultural Village. The details after this break. This April 7th and 8th, get yourself to Owali Beach for the 2017 Nevis Blues Festival. As the sun goes down, party to music by you Ian Siegel, to find man. Deanna Boga, AJ Jen, and many more. Regular boat services will connect St. Kitts from Frigate Bay and Reggae Beach direct to the festival. Find out more at nevisblues.com. Welcome back. St. Kitts and Nevis and the Democratic Federal Republic of Ethiopia have officially established diplomatic relations. The signature of the joint communique formalizing ties between the two countries marks a significant milestone for the Federation given the storied history between the Caribbean and the African country. The Ambassador of Ethiopia, His Excellency Dr. Hale Michael Afiwork, exalted the establishment of diplomatic relations by committing himself to the nourishment of the relations in London and beyond. He further noted the existing cooperation as exemplified in fora such as the Group of Africa, Caribbean and Pacific States, ACP, in Brussels. He used the opportunity to invite the Federation to establish a presence in Addis Ababa, that country's capital and a seat of the African Union. High Commissioner Isaac informed the Ethiopian envoy of the influence of his country in St. Kitts and and indeed the Caribbean through the Rastafarian community. Dr. Isaac called for both countries to continue leveraging that history to seek new grounds for cooperation in education, commerce, tourism, and cultural exchanges. High Commissioner Isaac proffered the idea of both countries sharing expertise and best practices in areas such as sugar production and tourism. Both envoys also called for increased bilateral and multilateral cooperation across important dossiers such as climate change. It's a bit noisy, but I wanted to say how absolutely pleased I am that St. Denise has entered into formal diplomatic relations with Brunei and Ethiopia. Particularly in the context of Ethiopia, I think particularly the Rastafarian community here would know the significance of Ethiopia, and St. Denise continues to foster new relationships and to cement old relationships. Ethiopia and the rest of Africa is of particular interest as we continue to promote South-South cooperation. Minister of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Mark Brantley. We will be making provision for the bullpen or the rose garden. What we will do is that we'll take down the present structure that is there. We will build back a structure that is much more secure and that would be in keeping with the renovations that we have here. So the present look with the galvanized, we will have that, we will maintain that, we will have the dance hall, everything, so persons could be rest assured that the rose garden or the bullpen will still be a feature of the cultural village. Director of the Cultural Secretariat, Antonio Abenati Liburd, is speaking on the rehabilitation work ongoing at the Nevis Cultural Village. Liburd stated in yesterday's newscast that the Cultural Village will undergo major rehabilitation for Cultural 43. According to Liburd, work will be done on the stage, security lights would be erected around the entire venue, and the removal of the boots to make space for new ones. To help in the rehabilitation process, says Labyrinth once again made an appeal to the current booth owners. We have already engaged the services of an architect to finalize the layout, um, the eventual layout of the, of the containers. And so over the course of this week, we will be sending out letters to the booth owners, asking them to have their structures removed by the end of March. So the end of March is the deadline for all of these booths to be out of the venue and we will commence construction thereafter. Director of the Culturama Secretariat, Antonio Abenati Liburd. And that concludes this evening's presentation of the Nevis Newscast. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing. Good night.